It's War Dragon time. Hey everyone, it is RPW here with another episode for Back to the Basics. This is one of my newest series where I'm bringing Back to the Basics videos for all those that are just starting out. And then as we go through the series, it'll become more for intermediate and then so forth. So it basically is replacing my Beginner's Guide to War Dragon series, which is basically dead in the water due to all the changes that's come into this game. So I'm super excited to be bringing this back to you. And in today's video, we're going to be doing choosing a team. What is right for you? So basically, we're going to be going over how you can choose your team. This is for lower level players that are just getting into the game, trying to find the right team for them and their skill set now that they know what they like and what they want to do with their gaming, but not necessarily, you know, certain on how to find that team. Now, the key word here, I've created an acronym for everyone, is going to be reflect. Now with this acronym, I've been able to put together key words to help you remember what questions you should be asking whenever you do find a team that you want to possibly join. Now with these key words, they're going to allow you to kind of stack the team up against your personal preferences. Not every player that say you're level 200 doesn't necessarily mean you should be in platinum because maybe you don't play but once a week, or maybe you're level 50, but you are a fast, fast grower. And for that reason, you can get by with upper platinum. So keep that in mind. Now, the first thing is going to be requirements, then event importance, future path, league placement, equal participation, castle maintenance, and then training and leadership. So these are the key factors you're going to want to match up what that team style is compared to what your want or your needs are as a player. So for example, if I'm a level 359, I think is what I am, and events aren't important to me at all, like I don't even play them, then I'm not going to want to go to a team that makes it extremely important to do these events right? You know, I don't want to put myself in a situation where I want to be kicked out or I'm taking up a space for somebody that could make that important. You know, why not leave that for somebody else? And there are players out there that'll just join teams just to get those good placements um, from other people's work. And unfortunately, that's not the way it works. This isn't a free for all. I mean, I get it's a free to play game, but it's not a free to play team. You got to be willing to put in the work, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and go through each one of these so that we can better describe it. Now, the first one is going to be requirements. Now, keep in mind when you do find a team, each team is going to have a specific set of requirements. For example, they'll have things like event placement points, minimums. They'll even have Atlas event minimums. And then sometimes they'll even say that you have to build a certain amount of troops regularly and how often you're defending your castle or an alliance castle. And that's just to name a few. I mean, there's going to be teams out there that also are like, look, we have wars every week and you have to be on for those. Um, there are teams that really go overboard um, and want you to be on to defend a certain amount of time to, between certain periods or whatever. And then I hear rumors. I've never personally seen this. This is not, you know, from personal experience, but I've also heard rumors that there are some teams out there that require you to maintain Atlas elite so you really want to know what it is you're getting into before you just go joining a team unfortunately a lot of teams don't you know come up front on things like this so make sure you ask now event importance what does this mean now some teams will put more importance on events than others and on a team that i know i had founded i made sure that i pushed everyone for the highest possible point participation because I believe that events is where especially their lower level players grow. It excites them. It keeps them going. So for me, that was a very important thing for our team, but not to an overabundance that pushed spending by any means. But there are teams out there that are solely mostly about Atlas and they don't have a lot of, you know, push in the events. So depending on what it is you are looking for, like let's say you don't have time to do PVPs, you might want to look for a team that is not as important on the event side, but maybe on the Atlas side. Okay, so the next one is going to be future path. Now, this could be as simple as like where they plan on going in the leagues. Like if you're wanting to join a gold team, you join a gold team, they may be planning to push for Sapphire. If that's not what you're wanting, then you may not want to join them. And then this also goes in some other areas as well. Maybe their future path is 
in the next couple weeks, they planned on merging with another team or they're planning to push for castles or, you know, you don't know what that might be, but you might want to ask them, hey, what are you guys planning to do with the team over the next, you know, course of a couple weeks? So you can kind of see what it is their future path is going to be and see if that really maintains with the idea of what it is you're trying to get out of your gaming. Because again, sometimes some teams are going to be way higher demanding than what some players can put out. So make sure that you match. Now, league placement. Each league has their benefits, but remember, they have their negative aspects too. So let's say you're a level 80 and there is a Sapphire team chopping at the bits just trying to find anybody to join their team. And they send you a message, hey, you asked me last week if you wanted to join our team and we told you no, tell you what, we'll give you a, we'll give you a shot, right? So you join their team, you're going to get some amazing benefits when it comes to things like your egg tokens every day and the big players there to help you if they're available. But in a lot of the teams that are like Sapphire League, a lot of the players already know the basics of the game. So you're not going to have a lot of one-on-one help the way you would in, let's say, mid to lower Sapphire, I'm sorry, mid to lower Platinum and down in Gold. So keep that in mind. And then on top of that, the PVPs might be a lot more challenging for you because most Sapphire teams are going to have players well above your attack power. So whenever you come to a PVP, unless you have serious backup available for you, you might find yourself in a pickle when it comes to your personal points. Okay, so the next one is going to be equal participation. It is very important that you make sure that you place yourself in a team where all the players in that team are pulling their weight and that of course you are as well, you know, equally putting in what everybody else is too. It is unfair to hold a position from somebody that could benefit from that team just because you want to sit there. And it's unfair to you to be on a team where you're putting in your all and maybe you're spending money and you're getting massive points because you're very competitive and nobody else on the team is not. That can be very trying on a player and and cause them to want to leave. Now, I'm not saying that if you are always getting a million points, you should go out and try to find a team that's also going to gain a million points each player in every event or whatever it might be. But what I'm saying is, let's say, you know, you're looking for a team and like a third of the team isn't even playing in the PvP. And a third of them are putting in like crazy amounts of time into the PvP. And the other third is like, yeah, I'll do it this weekend. That kind of team is not going to do well because eventually those that are working very hard are going to get recruited out of that team. You know, you're going to want to find the one that's more suited to your event playing style, your activity level. Now, castle maintenance. Now, when I say castle maintenance, guys, I'm not talking about the gold. Yes, you're going to have to help farm gold for your team so they can pay upkeep, but that's not really what I'm talking about. Castle maintenance is more than just gold. So if you have a castle and it comes under attack, you're going to need to have troops to help protect it. And you're going to need to be available as often as possible to help your team protect that castle. And then on top of that, if you have, you know, an alliance team or you're a part of a larger alliance, you may be required to do a specific amount of um, defending or so forth with those teams as well. So you might want to think about what that specific, you know, team's castle maintenance might be. Now, the way to figure that out is let's say it's got really high level castles like level fives. You better be willing to put in some work. If it has level twos. You might have some work to do, but not anything serious. And then, of course, in the medium, you're going to have the medium situation. And then last but not least, it also depends on how many castles that team might have, which will decide on how much time you're going to have to be putting into, a, you know, an Atlas style team. Now, the next thing is training and leadership. Now, I'm not saying that you should not join a team that doesn't have an active you know, like every moment a leader in there versus or an officer, you know, always available for you. <clears throat> you know, this is your game. You can play it on your own. However, if you are one of those players that needs a lot more hands on, you know, guide, then you might need to join a team where they're more about that, where the, you know, they're very caring and very nurturing to their players. However, if you're a player that, you know, feels like you just want to do it on your own and do your own thing, but willing to listen to the leadership if you've done something wrong, then you might want to go for a team that's a little more laxed 
on those specific you know things. So keep that in mind too when it comes to a team and their training and their leadership situation on their team. Now, now that you know what you want in a team, like specifically to you know your type of game style or your type of time that you have to put into the game, now you're gonna have to figure out exactly how it is you're going to find it. Now, how do you find that specific team that you're looking for, that perfect team? I mean, come on, we have a hard enough time trying to find our spouses in life, right? So how do you find a team that you can't just browse through and look into the background on? Well, there are some ways. First of all, you can use the in-game searches to kind of search up teams in certain leagues and then reach out and ask questions or whatever. There's also Facebook groups. The forums has some sections where teams will recruit. And then of course, you also can do it through acquaintances, you know, friends you might make through alliances or just friends in general. So those are gonna be the four basic big ways that you're gonna be able to find a team. However, once you find the team, do not forget to ask and answer questions. You're not gonna know if they're right for you if you don't ask a few questions. And they're not gonna know if you're gonna be right for them if you're not willing to answer them, which might keep you from getting accepted. So make sure you ask those, you know, quick questions that are most important to you in your gaming. And you, of course, you can use the REFLECT um, acronym to help you do so. Now, keep in mind, anytime you switch teams or you go to a new team, it can be a challenge. And you really just need to try to keep an open mind when you do so, because sometimes it's not necessarily the team that you're joining. It's, you know, we get comfortable in our own mindset and the way that we do things, whether it be, you know, a way an old leader had done it or an old team had done it. And then it becomes very challenging to you to change your ways. That's just how humans are. So please, 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 when you find a new team, give them like a season before you make any decisions. Don't be rash. Just hang in there. Hold in tight. You might find out that you absolutely love them after all. However, what if it doesn't work? You know, it's not working. They've kicked you from the team or they're not putting in anything near what you're putting in and you just feel stuck now, right? It's like, oh no, but I don't wanna be here, but I don't wanna leave them because I like them, but they're not doing enough for the team and I'm holding them up, whatever it might be. It's just a game, guys, move on. You don't have to spill over cried milk on this. It is just a game. I guarantee you, if you tick them off, it'll be no more than a week or a month. Just move on. Just make sure you do it in a proper manner. Let them know, and then you can go between um, events, and they can bring something else into your place to prevent a lost war. That prevents the enemies. All right, guys, so that is going to be the basics on how you can choose a team, one that is right for you, of course, and hopefully this helps those of you out that are trying to decide that, you know, where do I belong? How do I get there? How do I find out? You know, do I take that jump, that risk? What do I do? So this is how I would specifically do it. I've never really been one that's gone from teams to teams, so I'm just going off, like, just my thoughts on this, not from experience. So if you have any tips, be sure to put those in the comment section below. And guys, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Until next time, happy hunting.